Hello everyone, good morning once again, good afternoon as per your respective time zone on behalf of entire managed services team. We'd like to welcome you all to 22 day benefits and compensation advisory webinar session. This important session is to keep you fully synchronized with the new features and functionalities as a part of this quarter release which Oracle provides. My name is Hardik Patel and I'm an options manager here at Mastec Managed Services team. Today I'm your host for this session and I'm glad to introduce my colleague Pragya who's part of our vast HCM team at Mastec. Today she'll take us through all the benefits and compensation updates for 22D quarter release. Today's session is planned for around 45 to 60 minutes and we'll make sure that we'll also leave some time to answer any questions you may have. Before we move to the agenda, let's have a quickly look at the important disclaimer. We'd like to convey your approach towards Oracle updates in a very, very simple method. We'll be taking you through vital analysis for the 22D updates done by our experts, which will help you incorporating new features and updates easily into your system. We will sync you on any bugs or known issues if there are any. It's good to have an interactive session, so please do ask questions through chat or question panel. We have expert panelists available, Rohit and Sandeep, who will be happy to take it up any questions you may have. If we run out of time, we'll make sure that we also reach you at the later stage and we answer any of the questions you may have. This is to give you a glimpse on how we have crafted the structure of this session. So first thing what you see is list of new features coming into 22D. Detailing on features, so you get brief understanding on what new features are all about and Next one is what are the business benefits and important takeaway for you as a decision maker. There are four components where we have done in-depth analysis of the features which we're going to present to you today. The first one is impact level analysis, which demonstrate the impact on end user. If it's a low impact, then regression testing can be avoided or not. If it's a lot, if it's a high impact, then we need to opt for regression testing. And the second one, which is we all are aware, there are some features which are by default auto enabled by Oracle, and there are some which we need to opt for. Third one highlights the nature of the feature. There would be certain configuration which may be required and some can be used without any changes. And the last one, which is a quick win. This term we use to simply convey that what is ready to use by investing minimum amount of time and efforts, and what requires significant amount of time and efforts to make use of this feature. We won't take much of your time. We'll begin today's session, but before that, I'll be quickly launching the poll, and um, we're in, we'd like to note down that which industry does your organization belongs to. Please, if you can help. This will probably help us crafting more fruitful webinar. Thank you so much. We'll be closing the poll now, and then I'll ask my colleague Pragya to begin for today's session. Pragya, unmute yourself, and stage is all yours. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Hardik, for the wonderful introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined this particular session. My name is Pragya, and I will walk you through the newly introduced uh, features for benefit and compensation 22D upgrade. We have prepared an analysis of all the enhancement and our goal is to provide the introduction of these feature with understanding of its business benefit. Okay, so but prior to me taking you through all these features, let's understand this graph analysis. So there are in 20, uh, total 28 uh, features this time introduced for benefits and compensation. And we have divided this feature into two categories, default and opt-in. So default are the ones uh, that are enabled by default, wherein opt-in feature depends on the business needs. Here we have 25 features under default, under which 22 are the quick wins, which require very less or no configuration, and three are the report enhancements. And then we have three opt-in features available with the 22D upgrade. So essentially we have divided the session into four types of features 
and then we'll close out the session with the question answers. So feel free to ask your question throughout the session in the question answers panel or the comment box. We will take this question at the end of the session. All right, so let's start with our first category, which is quick win default with no configuration. So the first one is from the benefits manage beneficiaries for hidden life event in employee self service benefits. So this is one of the most desired feature for the benefit management. Employees can now designate or change beneficiaries using any time beneficiary flow for the life event that are not visible in the self service benefit. We all usually receive this kind of requirement from the benefit admins to hide the enrollment for a particular life event. Uh, let's say salary change for the example. But employees should still be able to update the beneficiary designation. Previously, it was not possible and in such cases admin intervention was always needed. But now employees can use the anytime beneficiary flow even if the visible visibility of the self service flag is disabled for that particular life event. This enhancement eliminates the need of benefit admin to do the beneficiary designation for the hidden life event on the behalf of employee. Okay, so now I'm moving to the uh, next feature from benefits, which is display primary care physician for processed life event. So this is another good feature introduced this time that allows employees to view their primary care physician in self service benefits at any point of time, even if there are no life event in the started status. This feature was not uh, not available uh, for the employees before, and uh, this will help them to view their PCPs within the application for which previously any third party websites were being used. As you can see in the given screenshot, employees can now view this information by as of effective date. Uh, this enhancement reduces the call to the benefit administrators regarding the information on primary care physicians. Uh, as you can see, the impact level is low for this feature, but uh, and then we, you know, don't need to enable this feature or do any kind of uh, configuration as such, and it requires uh, no time uh, for both the parties, so it's a quick win. Moving to the next feature from benefits is improve person change causes life event formula. So person changes are used to determine whether to trigger a life event based on changes done for the particular employee on assignment or on the personal information level. So this enhancement helps us to use the input values that trigger life event based on the person changes causes life event fast formula logic. As you can see, we have listed a few of the input values which are newly available to use in this formula. And uh, you can access the full list of input value from the new release Oracle provided documents. This enhancement allows the users of the formula in the correction mode. Now we can use the action occurrence IDs, reason codes, assignment numbers, and assignment sequences in this formula which reduces the need of manually attaching these life event in such cases. So now I'm moving to the next feature, which is from the compensation. Additional attributes in salary business object. Uh, those who have worked on or been using the autocomplete rules for any validation or default mapping can relate to this enhancement. With 22D upgrade, additional attributes will be made available under the salary business object. Uh, we have mentioned uh, the list of the new attribute, which include the adjustment amount, percentages, annual salary, comp ratio, full-time equivalent, salary ranges, points, and the rest. Uh, this enhancement uh, improves our coverage in validating the salary using these new attributes. Uh, the thing that we uh, have to make a note of is that uh, we can use uh, these um, uh, attributes in criteria or while building any condition, but we can't default them. These can only be used for the object validation as shown in the screenshot. We have used it for the salary business object type validation, but we can define the field validation or modification rules on these attributes. Okay, so the next one is 
salary can't be maintained for inactive assignment during the change assignment. So we can't create or update salary for the inactive assignment or the assignment that will become inactive in the change assignment action. So for example, you can't propose a salary change while ending, uh, while ending an assignment or a temporary one. So under the salary section, system will give you this warning, as you can see in the given screenshot, which says you can't create or edit salary because the assignment is inactive or will become inactive. So this enhancement uh, provides a seamless experience that prevents error from happening after the final approvals. And uh, so during the change assignment action, salary change won't be available in this, these highlighted actions, which is end assignment and end and uh, and uh, temporary assignments. Uh, and one more thing that we uh, we uh, should highlight here is that by default this feature will be enabled. But if we don't want to use this feature, then we can set this profile option for no salary change when inactive value as no. To opt out of this, uh, to opt out of this feature from manage administrator profile value task. Okay, so now I'm moving to the next slide, which is copy individual compensation awards during the mass legal employer change. So currently, individual compensation um, allocation can be copied during the global transfer transaction from your source legal employer to your destination legal employer when your legislative data group is same. This was previously only available for the individual transaction, but now this can be done during the mass legal employer change process as well. This will only work if we make sure to check uh, this highlighted box over here which says to copy individual uh, compensation award to the new assignment. Once your mass legal employer change process is submitted, the dashboard will also include the successful copy of the individual compensation allocation as highlighted over here. This enhancement will improve the efficiency and reduce the manual step needed to create the details from the original legal employer to your uh, source uh, legal, uh, sorry, your destination legal employer. So the next slide so shows that uh, we don't need to do anything to enable this feature as it is enabled by default. But if we want to avoid mistakes like unchecking the box when uh, uh, by which the transfer process is happening, then we can use the HCM Design Studio to hide it. Uh, you can see we can make it visible or not visible from the uh, HCM Design Studio under that particular actions. Uh, hiding it won't uh, prevent copying, but the only way to prevent copying is to keep that field visible and unchecking it manually before submitting the process. And this feature will work under two conditions only. The first one is that your legislative data group of the element linked should be same in both the legal employers and secondly the individual compensation plan have uh, should have the restrict plan access setting as no or it should include the global transfer action okay now moving to the next one which is copy document record with individual compensation during the global transfer Global transfer and mass legal employer change action now automatically copy the attached document of record along with individual compensation allocations. So document link uh, available with the individual compensation allocation from the source legal employer, which is shown in the given screenshot, will be copied to the new record created after the global transfer or the mass legal employer change action. Uh, this has low impact level, but it's definitely a quick win as we don't require any configuration to enable it. Uh, this enhancement lets us maintain the document traceability even after the global transfer and the traceability stays with the source individual compensation allocation only. Uh, the screenshot over here shows that document of record copied from the source legal employer compensation to the destination legal employer individual compensation as shown here and highlighted. Okay, so the next feature for compensation is require the submission of documents with individual compensation proposal of pending workers. So in the previous 22C, 
we could uh, update we could make the submission of document with individual compensation mandatory in certain actions and now with 22d update we can require the uh, the proposer to attach the relevant document or make the attachment optional in add pending worker and edit uh, pending worker actions so once the pending worker transaction is approved the attachment will be available in the individual's document record under the compensation serial document type category the pending worker conversion copies the submitted document to your converted employees or the contingent worker assignments as well this enhancement ensures that document are submitted where required and it preserve the uh, and it preserve them for the audit purpose uh, if you want your compensation managers to view this document of record attachments then we need to make sure that the managed person documentation privilege is added to your particular custom role if you are using any custom roles otherwise by default it will be seedily available in your compensation roles so now i'm moving to the uh, next feature from compensation which is view lookup meaning in individual compensation notifications that displays the input values so this improved notification feature is associated with the task as manage personal contribution manage compensation and administrator individual compensation so let's take an example let's say gross up plan for which we have enabled the input values in the approval notification but previously only the input value code can be seen in such cases but now we can also enable the meeting so this enhancement or provides the approvals with more meaningful input values on individual compensation uh, approvals which can be shown here there's a one example shown here which so, uh, which shows the exact uh, directly the meaning of the input value and this feature eliminates the further step of manually looking for the meaning of the input values from the configuration pages now moving to the next slide which is update of information icon in worksheet column headers uh we can now see information new icon in all the worksheet uh, column headers uh we used to see the question mark icon for information before which has been updated with circle i icon and same is highlighted in the given screenshot as you can see now the new icon will be visible in the worksheets uh we have seen this icon before in the front end application or the configuration task pages and now the same will be used in the worksheet as well which will maintain the uniformity and uh, we can say that this icon is more attentive and eye catching and we can you know directly relate uh, relate with this the existing summary icon okay so our next enhancement is updated setup task for workforce compensation so this feature is one of the most useful and important feature with this update this has two updates so first one is look and feel you can see the word configure has been removed from each task name of the workforce compensation and the task name uh, and the task name then self provide the uh, the uh, access to that individual task and the status icon has been moved from the uh, has been moved to the left of the uh, task names and second is the plan setup information now shows the details section on the page itself the same page itself uh, as you can see in the given screenshot previously we have to click on each individual go to task in order to you know see the plan information this enhancement uh, will make sure we won't be editing anything by mistake as we can view the information directly now from the setup and uh, this uh, thing cannot be altered uh, this will be applicable to all the task for the workforce compensation such as the foundation task list your budget your worksheet task list your models and report as well as validation and processing uh this feature lets the administrators to uh, view plan setup information more quickly and access the setup pages directly which saves the clicks and time and we don't need to do anything to enable this feature so now i'm uh, moving to the uh, next slide which is deep link for workforce compensation 
uh, we now have a new deep link available, which will be CMP underscore workforce underscore compensation under the deep link list, which can be used to open the workforce compensation lending page directly from the external sites. This link can also be used or included in a journey or checklist for workforce compensation. Uh, we don't need to do anything to enable this feature, but uh, we can make sure of two things. First is that the link will only work to land on the workforce compensation landing page. But if we want to access any plan, then we have to navigate to that desired plan. And secondly, this link won't work in case where plan cycles are closed or we are accessing it outside the cycle dates. OK. Now the next good feature from the compensation is grade step progression error processing. So the text uh, used in some existing grade step progression uh, warning or the error messages have been uh, has been updated to make it more clear. So if we have a configuration for proposed salary less than or equal to the current salary to throw an error while using the batch processes or HR actions. Now it can be differentiated depending on whether the salary amount is determined by the user or by the simple component. The new message make it more clear that the comparison happens on the component amount when salary is determined by the simple component. Uh, the these error conditions are you know totally configurable and same can be disabled using the configure global compensation setting task in setup and maintenance so in the next slide we have given the error and the warning message verbiage for both batch and the error uh, hr action and we can clearly see the difference here between the error for the simple component and the error for uh, if it is determined by the user and the same goes for the warning messages as well all right, moving to the next slide. Updated individual worker display configuration pages. So the individual worker display configuration pages are now more streamlined. Previously, there were uh, more configuration navigation steps. The preview option uh, was you know, available under the same task page over here with the drill down option. And uh, same can be seen in this old and the new configuration page that now with this feature the display configuration are more streamlined and now on the main page we will have the page property and the configuration page and preview will be moved to the next task and or the next separate tab we, uh, uh, tab we can say uh, this will make sure we require the fewer clicks to complete the given task uh, this feature will be enabled by default and we don't need to you know do anything to or any sort of configuration for the same as well all right moving to the next slide this slide will focus on the discontinued feature with this update so discontinued support for salary default from grade ladder rates on hcm classic simplified pages so from the update 22d the feature that populates the salary and the grade ladder rates on classic ui pages like employment page under the person management has been removed Previously, this feature was uh, this feature updated the salary record when you change the grade ladder or grade or step on a person assignment. The classic employment pages doesn't contain a compensation on the salary or the salary section. So this feature, you know, used to depend on a service to update the salary record. Similarly, the related event trigger are also been removed. So in order to default uh, salary from the grade ladder rate, we need to use the responsive UI HR actions. Uh, this feature uh, promotes to utilize the responsive UI uh, rather than the classic one. The only thing that uh, we need to uh, make a note of is that the other classic pages like uh, hire an employee or add a contingent worker, which still includes the compensation sections are not impacted with this feature which means they will uh, they will update your compensation based on your grades and everything. So next slide uh, here will focus on the market data update. So market data enhancement for job and position in HSTL. Now you can use the dialog box within the spreadsheet loader to look up for either job or position codes. 
uh, then the changes in the page dialogues uh, and loading spreadsheet to display the parent job indicator as well. Uh, this will make it more easier to find the parent benchmark jobs. Uh, previously, uh, the import composite HSDL didn't support the dialog boxes for job and position code. However, the manage job list uh, HSDL already had that search dialog box feature, but now it has been integrated with the new parent job search criteria as well. And same is highlighted in this given screenshot. Uh, this feature, uh, you know, also displays the consistency in the search dialog boxes by enabling the parent job indicator and uh, can be used to look up jobs and position in search dialog box within the HSTL spreadsheet as well. Okay, so the next one is again from the market data. It is configure market composites. So, um, Previously, it was recommended that we only load the composite that we want people to see or even the friendly labels were not available. Now you can feel free to populate all the columns in the composite table so that the professional user have the access to the complete task. And uh, there is a new task in market data called configure market composite display. This task can be used to control the trans uh, uh, transparency throughout the process. Uh, this can uh, this task can be used to select the compensation types to display and we can use this add action button over here to uh, to add more and uh, we can uh, choose the display name as well as per our uh, friendly label if we want and separately we can also enable the market data uh, market target as desired as well and again we can enter our display name if you want it to be appear in a different label and if you can uh, click on this uh, highlighted uh, uh, composite table will you know now will show the columns which uh, which is included in it and then this can also be make you know we can make it enable or disable for the columns and then we can again add a friendly column which means we have the full control over here this feature lets us use the new configure market uh, composite display task to control the display of values and labels of the market composite on pages. So moving on to our next slide, uh, which is external data enable delete in HDL. So this is another good feature introduced with 22D update. We can now use the HDL data loader uh, to delete rows in uh, in the external data previously the ability to delete was limited to either the purge table the entire table or delete record matching criteria actions in the external data pages this feature uh, automate uh, automates the external data maintenance with the new ability to delete uh, via uh, via the HDL and we don't need to do anything to enable this feature as well one thing that we can make a uh, note here is that if we are using the external data for assignment segment within the workforce compensation then we have to make sure to run the reprocess or add new plan process in the admin administer workers to update each person's data okay now moving to the next slide which is again from compensation person and assignment number columns added to the grade step progression review page so this enhancement has added two new columns to the result pages of the review proposed progression and the salary update task person number and assignment number will now be enabled the same is shown here that uh, we can view the person number or assignment number on the same page result page this enhancement can be uh, used to easily find the right person number when two or more people have the similar names and uh, this feature saves time by uh, you know eliminating an additional step of going to the person management to accessing the person number or the assignment number for a particular employee so this uh, next slide shows how we can display or enable this uh, these uh, new columns on the result page by selecting them from the table level view menu and steps are highlighted here as well under the view columns and you can check these Okay, so by this feature, uh, we are done with our first category. Now let's start with the next category, which is quick win default with configuration. Okay, 
so first one under this uh, category is reuse action occurrence identifier so people assignments include an action identifier we can now opt in to reuse that identifier while creating or uh, correcting the salary independently of creating or correcting the assignment so this reuse happened whenever an assignment uh, exists with the same start date action and reason as the new or the corrected salary so by default when we create or correct salary independently of assignment salary always get a new action occurrence identifier and uh, by using this feature to reuse the identifier the employment history and the future action section of the employment page will show the both salary changes and the assignment bundled together so the theme has been highlighted over here this uh, provides a cohesive view of assignment and salary irrespective of whether the changes happen together or have been done separately so as this comes under the quick win with a few configuration so in uh, order to enable this feature we need to set the profile value as yes for salary to reuse action profile name from manage administrator profile value task and the thing that we have to uh, make sure is that this is uh, recommended only if we are uh, you know we have enabled the responsive pages or using the enhancement uh, enhanced employment information page okay so the, so the second feature under this category is launch document record page from the compensation spotlight for individual compensation plan submitted with attachments so in the previous 22c update we could make submission of the document as required with individual compensation in certain actions now with 22d update we can view the document attachment for the approved individual compensation allocation using my compensation information action as you can see uh, in the given screenshot we have highlighted the attachment a uh, link that will be visible when the approve individual uh, allocation includes a document attachment and if you click on this highlighted area uh, we can then download the document as well this enhancement make it easy to you know quickly trace the document provided with the individual compensation proposals and um, there are two things that we we have to note is that in order to enable this feature for a particular custom role uh, if you want your co compensation um, custom manager to have the access of the same then the respective role should have the appropriate document type security profile and secondly if we are uh, using the custom compensation role then we have to make sure to add manage person documentation aggregate privilege in the uh, to add in your role and uh, in total we can say the people can only view the attachment or the document based on the role and their data security okay so now the last feature under this category is update grade step as part of a workforce compensation cycle so this is another good feature for uh, from compensation that we can now uh, let the uh, managers to update person grade step as part of the workforce compensation cycle previously it was not possible to do so the grade step were uh, updated separately as a part of the process but now the current grade ladder and the grade step are also included in the list of available worksheet columns so the given screenshot shows how uh, how the uh, new columns will look like in the worksheets so as the part of the new column properties only the proposed grade step is included in the audit trail and is allowed for the update as well and uh, depending on the criteria met for the assignment the same value will be shown in the proposed grade columns as well and uh, i would like to you know highlight few things over here the first one is that when we do the batch processing so the transfer process skip the salary transfer for those employees who are on the grade ladder and grade step and has the salary updated checked for them 
so in order to uh, to make sure their salaries are updated as well we need to run the rate synchronization process separately to update the salary on the assignment uh, because the transfer process doesn't update the salaries on the assignment level and secondly if there are future dated records or the pending approval on a person's assignment the transfer process doesn't update the uh, update the record and same applies to the back out workforce compensation um, process cycle as well okay so now we are done with two category which are quick win default with no configuration quick win default with configuration now it's time to start with the third category feature updates which is opt-ins with configuration okay so the first one under this category is from the benefits enhance auditing on benefit service center so this is one of the most useful announcement provided with this update the uh, benefit service center and the self service benefit pages will now have additional columns to improve the customer audit capability which include created by creation date updated by and updation date and this new audit capability will be applicable on uh, only some pages which includes your benefit relationship your court orders dependents and benefit balances and your sorry dependents and beneficiaries under the enrollment result then your person information your benefit balances and your benefit group task pages so here we have shown two examples from the benefit relationship and the benefit groups uh, it includes the new audit columns and uh, shows how it will look like so first it uh, it shows how who created this and when it was created originally and then who updated it last and when it was updated same under the benefit group as well so you can expect the same look on other pages as well so this uh, enhancement you know provides more visibility into uh, into ownership of changes in the system and uh, will make it easier to understand the flow and process uh, currently this information was only fetched using the reports which will no longer be required in such cases we can you know directly relate because many times we create a report to you know to trace back like who has updated this record particular record to you know to know the this uh, whole process and the ownership so this is like really useful in those cases so and um, moving to the next slide which shows in order to uh, display these additional columns in benefit service center and the self service area uh, we need to enable these attribute using the hcm experience design studio by selecting the appropriate action for adding these column so this is how your action uh, if you click on your action from the uh, HCM Design Experience Studio, you should be able to see these fields under under those benefit relationship. If you choose the data source, then you can make it visible or not visible depending on your requirement. Okay, so now I'm moving to the next slide. So the uh, next slide is another great uh, update for benefit, which is use guided journey for benefits. So this enhancement lets us configure the help information such as videos, text, and document for the benefit pages and section within the page. So uh, for example, uh, we can add a video on how to designate dependent and beneficiaries to before you enroll page so that that particular uh, participant can launch the video from the page or section when they need guidance. Uh, we can, you know, um, we can also configure to add the guided journey on before you enroll or benefit election overview pages in the self service benefits. So this uh, screenshot over here shows how uh, we can add the page level or the section level guided journey under the guide me task of that particular page. And uh, I think this will come, you know, really handy before the open enrollment as well, because uh, many employees are, you know, maybe the new to the Oracle this time and they can, you know, directly refer to the, these documents or the videos to, you know, instead of going back to the admin to ask for all the information again and again. So I think this is definitely a good feature this time. And uh, this, uh, you know, this enhancement also, you know, helps the administrator to configure the helpful information in the strategic locations only. So if they 
think this is the best suited for their particular employees set of employees then they can definitely make it visible for them so uh, in order to you know to make this enable in all the pages uh, and uh, add these journey on those pages we have to make sure that the journeys are enabled from the profile options then uh, we can create a checklist template or to you know set up and add tasks that are relevant to that guided journey then we can use the transaction design studios to map these checklist or task on the benefit pages or sections okay by this so moving to the next slide it shows the another uh, feature from compensation which is enhanced ability to add the otbi reports in salary and individual compensation pages so um, this uh, this feature makes it easy, uh, easier to add the otbi report to salary and individual compensation pages uh, previously we could only add reports using the web pages object type and the scope parameters were not even available now we will be able to add the uh, the object type of report and we can enable the parameters for the assignment id and the person ids this feature can be used by the page personalization via your page composer so if you want to make sure you want to add your report in the system uh, it shows here like how it will you know look like in the in the page under the salary details so like two things we have to make sure this otbi report should be available under the uh, your current uh, report list and secondly uh, we have to enable it going through the page personalization and you know make it enable from there only so this feature you know simplifies how we can add the otbi report to salary and as well as the individual compensation feature with new ability to add report using the parameters uh in order uh, in order to make sure your you know report is running on time and uh, we need to you know set the performance of the report so we have to make sure before that we test the report to return the result in the reasonable amount of time so by this uh, we are done with our three categories now so moving into the last category of this session which is reporting enhancement all right so the first one under this is benefit open enrollment diagnostic report so we can uh, you know utilize the uh, benefit open enrollment diagnostic report to discover and resolve the open enrollment issues so this report identifies any missing or the correct setup that are associated with open enrollment uh this uh you know this also provide the current state of your enrollments which is present in the system your associated transaction or your action item your action item could be if the current employees are missing the dependents or the beneficiaries or they have not submitted their evidence of ins insurability for the previous actions so, and uh, one more good feature uh, you know which is that uh, this also recommends us the best practice that we have to follow you know on the per jobs or the for the auditing or for the profiles and the lookups and for the batch parameter as well to achieve the optimal performance uh, this report you know also provide us the alert options that can help us to manage the events and you know communicate effectively with the participants so usually we used to do the all these tasks separately now we have this report to you know to handle all the situation for once and all so this is a good feature so uh, we can run this report from the diagnostic report this won't be available under your normal uh, catalog it will you have to go and run it uh, from the diagnostic report section only and uh, we can run this report uh, while setting up our open enrollment or preparing for an upcoming open enrollment after setting up some new plans or new option or the rate as well and uh, this report also you know reduce the issue that could possibly arise uh, when the schedule event uh, process runs so when we batch processes all the employees open enrollment at once we receive all kind of issues over there so if we run this report before then those issue won't be you know coming there 
So this is a sample example of the open enrollment diagnostic. So you can see here we have it shows the missing input values. If you have any, it will be listed down over here. Then we have the lookups for the opt-in features. If uh, if you have opt-in like some new features or anything else like that, it will be shown over here under this lookup options. Then the last section shows that unresolved life event, suspended enrollment, or the pending actions. And it also differentiate based on the life event. And similarly, it will show the rest of the information if you try to access it after your latest update. Uh, this uh, enhancement, you know, proactively identifies the open enrollment issues to save time and money. And uh, also the early identification of the issue or the omission provide us time for resolution, which, you know, at the end increase our success rate of the open enrollment. And not only the uh, uh, the administrator, we can also recommend our customers to, you know, run this report to see what is the current status of all the employees in the system. So it, it should be helpful helpful in that case. All right. So now I'm moving to the next uh, feature, which is reporting on compensation zones. So this enhancement uh, uh, will add the compensation zones folder under the salary detail real time and the salary history detail real time subject area. So currently we have these two subject area under which we'll have these folders, the sub, uh, salary detail under which this new feature will add the compensation zones as well. Um, so previously the compensation zone information could only be sourced from the responsive pages. So previously we used to go to the responsive page to search for the information, then access that. Now we can you know, run it through the OTBI reports as well. So that, that reduce the time definitely. And uh, this helps us to do the reporting on salary detained with the compensation zone information coming from either the responsive page or your classic page. page. All right, so now um, I am moving to the uh, you know last feature that we are going to discuss today, which is uh, differential grade rate information on worker differential profiles. So the rate differential grade rate attribute is added under the salary detail real time and salary history uh, real time subject area. So this will uh, this will be available under your salary details. Then we'll have the rate differential over there in this folder only. So previously, what used to happen if we you know want to default the grade rate from the salary basis, instead of the factor, it used to show your differential rate uh, grade only. So now we we'll, we can also look at the rate differential grade rate as well. So this feature definitely improves our uh, reporting on the rate differential profile of a worker and it has low impact we don't have to you know do anything or enable or do any configuration but if you want to you know make sure if you want to pull this information in your report you have to you know refresh your report and update with these attribute and add these particular columns so by that i think we are done with our all the uh, features that we wanted to discuss today now we can move to the uh, next segment which is with the question answer sessions over to you, Sandeep and Rohit. Thank you, Pragya, for wonderful insights. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So we'll see if, they, if you have any questions there, uh, Sandeep, Rohit, if you would like to speak or please reconfirm. Uh, there was one question which has already been answered and the answer is also posted. Okay, perfect, not a problem. Um, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we'd quickly like to note down with your help on the screen that your area of interest, whether it's technology innovation, chatbot, RPA, IoT, AI, managed services, value-based analytics, or Glide 4.0. If you need any 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 information on any of those, you can reach out to the support manager or the service manager um, within your region and your respective sort of manager, we meant. We can arrange one-to-one -one session as well, if at all required more information on now uh, we'll be taking one more minute one one or two more minutes and then we'll close today's session thank you so much for this poll i'll be closing the same and um, with this we'd, we'd also like to keep you posted that in a couple of days time we'll be sending you the recording of the today's session along with the presentation pdf and um 
test scripts as well, so which will be available to you at a single click from your email itself. So that's going to be easy access. Can you also uh, we can you can look for the upcoming sessions next week. We have supply chain finance, workforce management, and global payroll on 12th of October. So anyone wants to register, please do so. And um, yeah, we'd like to thank you once again, everyone, for your important time. But before you leave us, we'd like to please. Um, would like to tell us that you know how was today's experience today on the scale of one to five which means five being highest so that we can improve based on your feedback thank you so much for the call thank you so much for the feedback which will help us improving moving forward and we'll be closing the poll now and we'll have just and just very very last question for you asking that have you attended any of the previous webinars please if you can help us with that and we're done with the session and if you do have any other questions please again reach out to the support manager or the service manager in your region and we'll be happy to connect at a later stage for any questions you may have or any of the sessions or anything. So thank you once again. Thank you.